So as I said, my name's Simon Hamilton. I'm the, the Chief Executive of Belfast Chamber. You're very welcome to this morning's event, which is entitled Improving Employee Financial Wellbeing. And we're delighted to be able to host this morning's event alongside our uh, partners and members at the Bruin Dolphin. Um, Belfast Chamber is always very, very keen to, to work with its members to uh, run events like this, which are hopefully informative, educational, and helpful to our, our members. So you're, you're all very welcome to this morning's event. Um, as I said, just, just um, ground rules, which um, everybody should be uh, familiar with, um, having used Zoom and Teams and other various formats for far too long now. Um, so everybody can remain muted, that would be great. Um, if you want to, um, there'll be an opportunity for questions uh, later on. So if anybody wants to you know, raise their hand and then I can unmute you, bring you in and you can, you can do that um, at that stage. So we want this to be interactive and conversational. So if you do have any questions, please please feel free to, to ask them. Um, so bef what I'm gonna do now is introduce uh, our friends at, at Brian Dolphin. Um, we're delighted that we're joined by, by Peter Murray, who is an investment manager at Brian Dolphin, and also by Sarah Malone, who is the head of reward, performance and insight at Brian Dolphin. Uh, you're both very welcome, delighted to have you. Thanks for uh, taking the time to, to come here this morning. So Peter, I'm gonna hand over to you and I know you've, you and Sarah have a, a presentation that you want to go through. And then as I said earlier, uh, we'll take some questions afterwards if anybody has anything. So thank you. Super, thanks very much, Simon. Um, and thanks to you in the chamber for, for hosting us this morning. Um, and to everyone else, thanks very much for joining us. Um, financial well-being is a bit of a hot topic at the moment. Um, I hate to use the C word so early in a presentation, but COVID has firstly got us all thinking about our finances a little bit more, um, but it's also probably impacted our finances um, in some shape or form. So we've started to see real demand for financial advice, but also for um, for companies starting to provide some sort of financial well-being service to their employees. Um, Sarah will touch on it, but we, we tend to do the physical and mental well-being quite well, um, but the financial well-being sort of gets left to the wayside. Um, so look, I'll, I'll introduce Brian Dolphin um, and briefly introduce myself, and I'll hand over to, to Sarah to introduce herself and the financial well-being program that we run at Brian Dolphin. So you may or may not have heard of Brian Dolphin. My slides aren't moving. Simon, can you, oh, there we go. Um, so who are Brian Dolphin? Um, we have been around for over 250 years now. Um, we've had an office in Belfast for about 15 or 16 of those years. Um, Group-wide, we manage about 56 billion pounds worth of assets on behalf of clients. Um, so they're primarily private individuals, but also trusts, charities, and corporates. We've got 34 offices up and down the UK, um, and we specialize in, in investment advice and long-term financial planning. Um, myself, I've been with Bruin Dolphin six years now, or almost six years, um, and my role is primarily financial advice and running investment portfolios on behalf of clients. So I'll hand over to Sarah and let her introduce herself and the, the financial wellbeing program. Brilliant. Thanks, Peter, and uh, thank you, Simon, for having us here. Delighted to be talking to you guys, particularly as it's Talk Money Week. So um, this is the last day of Talk Money Week, brilliantly planned. Um, I have been with Bruin Dolphin for seven years now. It's flown by. Um, my background, um, I trained originally as an accountant and then worked in large investment banks um, for more years than I care to admit to you guys. Um, I look after... Um, it's a crazy job title, but I look after basically pay and rations and employee data. So I have quite a good insight into kind of what, what makes our employees tick, what they need and, and, and what we pay them and what we spend as an organisation on, on uh, remuneration. Um, financial wellbeing has become a real passion subject to me because I feel like I sort of I, I follow what I say, not necessarily what I've done. Um, I truly believe if I'd spent less money on shoes and handbags, I'd be retired by now. So uh, listen to the likes of Peter. We'll, we'll talk you through what, 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 we're, what we're doing and how we can help. So um, could you move on to the next slide? Yeah, as Peter mentioned in his introduction, um, you know, 
physical and mental well-being have definitely been a part of uh, employers agenda now for for quite a time and, and we're seeing really good progress on that but financial well-being tends to get a little bit left behind and and i think what we're seeing and we'll come on to the data in a minute what we're seeing is is you cannot ignore the massive link between a, a person's financial situation and their mental well-being and if they are worried about their finances fundamentally they're worried and if we neglect that that pillar if you like of the well-being agenda um, we're neglecting a, a huge part of what's going on with employees in their minds and and, and what they're doing um, we've also seen um, you know employers being under more pressure to really think about this topic um, employers are being encouraged to take on a more paternalistic view generally with their employees um, we've got increasing ESG legislation and the corporate governance code that are really focusing employers minds on you know what they should be doing for their employees how they should be treating them and as we've moved away from a more um, government driven defined benefit pension society to one where we need to be saving for ourselves for the future whether it be college funds for our kids or our pension for retirement increasingly the employer is under pressure to provide some of that information and some of that education to their employees so um peter if you mind stepping on so these stats scare me um but i totally relate to them 94 percent of employees is, that took part in this particular survey said that they their finances caused them some degree of concern or some degree of stress. I can I can believe that. Um, I think we're living in a society now, and you know my, my favorite quote from my favorite economist um, is uh, Tim Jackson: "We spend money we don't have on things we don't need to make impressions on people we don't really care about." I love that. I'm guilty of that. I've already alluded to my handbag and, and shoe problem. It's real. Um, but I think, you know, this Instagram society, this this very consumer society that we're living in, it makes sense. We're spending too much money. We have too much stuff and we're not focused on saving. But where, where is that savings education coming from? It's not in schools. I've got two kids. Neither of them are getting any education. So where where are we going for that information? Um, 65% believe that they're not saving enough for long term plans. I suspect if people really understood a bit more about their pensions, that number might be even higher, um, scarily. 31% um, feel that their, their finances control their lives. And that's that's a terrifying statistic um, if people are spending that much time worrying about it. So ideally, we're here to help. And why, why do we think employers should be concerned? And if Peter, if you can sort of move on to the next slide, that'd be great. Um, we've got the next two slides, I think will we'll bring to life for employers what some of these issues are. Um, you know, if employees are worried about money, that's brain space that's being taken up by money worries rather than focusing on the task at hand, focusing on their job, focusing on collaborating with their, with their work colleagues. So you're more likely to have more sleepless nights, which can imp impact the quality of your work. We're seeing employees taking sick days as a result of financial well-being, where you've got lost productivity. Um, it states that almost 13 uh, employees are almost 13 times more likely to be unable to complete the daily tasks. Well, depending on the nature of your business, could that present risks? If you're in the construction industry, if you're in the financial services industry, what risk is that posing to you as a business? And also, if people are stressed, and we've all seen it, we've all been there as well, you're less inclined to work collaboratively with your colleagues. If you're distracted, you're not taking care of the task in hand, that's putting pressure on colleagues. And so it becomes this unvirtuous circle of, of stress. I think also employers are spending money, and, and this is something that we'll talk about when we talk about our experience, but employers, they're spending money providing benefits for their employees. And I don't think employees tend to really understand the value of their benefits and how they might be able to help contribute towards their financial and therefore their mental well-being. Typically when they when they focus on that is when they're leaving. And what we really want to do is educate, educate, educate people about what is what what they're what they're what we're providing now for employees in work so they 
the employer can maximize the return on investment in those benefits and the employee feels better because they actually understand what they've got having a plan is as you'll find out from peter later on is the be all and end all so just to bring those numbers th those statistics to life you know we found on average 36 percent of your employees will be worried about something so if you've got a thousand person company you need to got a hundred person company that's 360 or 36 people not focused on their jobs. They're focusing on, on their money worries. It's causing all of these issues and it, and it becomes exponentially a problem because of the impact on the colleagues. So this is what the data is telling us. Um, and I can definitely relate to that. I think there's also corporate governance now, you know, we're, we brew and dolphin are part of obviously the financial services sector I'm seeing our regulators, which for us is the FCA, are really looking to us to say, well, what, what's the culture? What are you doing for your employees that is trying to help with these issues? Are you providing the right environment for your employees to raise uh, and ask these types of questions about their, their well-being? Well-being brought generally, not just the financial well-being. Are you creating the right environment? So there is more regulatory pressure. And I think post COP26, I think that's only going to increase as we think about doing the right thing for our planet and for our people. So that's the kind of the big picture from my perspective. Um, where what have we done to contribute to this journey? So what we've what we saw was just an increasing number of requests from some of our clients. Um, who are leaders in their own businesses saying, well, you know, can you help us around this? We're, we're getting lots of questions. Um, and so we, we, we thought, OK, well, we, we probably can. We, we're lucky. We've got the skills, knowledge and expertise. Um, let's try and build something that we can share with people who are interested in it and, and see what it tells us, see what information we get out of it and see what's the best way that we can help, you know, focusing on what we're good at. So when we're not. When, you know, financial well-being is, is a spectrum. It deals with everything from debt consolidation at one end right through to, you know, seriously wealthy individuals and planning for them. And we can cover a lot of that spectrum. We're not experts in debt consolidation or universal credit, those types of issues, but we can definitely point towards that. So we're really focusing what we're really good at, which is, you know, the basics, getting people to make a plan, getting people to build a budget, and then we can build from there. So we're running a number of these sessions. I think what we've found now is that just from dipping our toe in the water, we're now, we've now got 32 B2B partnerships um, where we're talking to clients and presenting to employees. Um, we don't just wanna focus on a B2B service. We're also looking at what we can do for schools. As Peter said in the intro, we've got 34 offices. So we're really well spread across the UK. And we do work quite closely with the communities in which we operate. So we're looking to do something that, that reaches out to the communities that we work in, the charities that we work with. Um, and we're certainly piloting some of the work there with the brokerage and the young people coming through to provide this type of information because it's just not available in schools. We've now developed a schools offering as well that we're running. And then we've got our B2B service, um, which we're finding incredibly popular. And we're also seeing a lot of individuals the back of those sessions asking for one-to-one -one sessions we've definitely found with financial well-being there is no one size fits all you literally don't know what people are dealing with behind the scenes people are also often nervous about asking what might be perceived as a crazy silly question there is no such thing as a silly question trust me i've been there um but they might not want to share that in front of colleagues or it may they may seem vulnerable in that situation so they'd much rather have a one-to-one -one. I think we're also finding that digitization does, it acts as a teaser, but on this subject, because there is no one size fits all, people still get value from creating a relationship and having a one-to-one -one conversation with a person, but they don't know who to talk to. So we're trying to create awareness so that, that people can come and talk to us ideally. Um, We've also commissioned a study. We're working with a university, University of East Anglia, Ang I can't say it, East Anglia, um, and they're doing a research project to see 
what actually works, what resonates with people when they want to learn about financial well-being. Um, I appreciate it's not the sexiest of topics. I get it. But actually, when you get into it, it really is quite interesting. And as someone who has you know, relatively recently really gripped my financial position because I've had the osmosis of working at Bruin Dolphin now and absorbed all this information, I can tell you it really has changed my life in terms of I know where I am, I know where all my pension information is, I've gathered it from the back of the sofa and put it into one place and have it more thoughtfully. And I have relaxed, I have thought, right, I know, I know where I'm going now. And we're definitely getting this feedback that that similar reaction is had by people who've had those conversations. Um, so just could you move on one more slide, please, Peter? Brilliant, thank you. Um, Lots, you know, this echoes the stats that we, we talked about in slide four. I think I used to work in the States and a lot of people in the States are much more attuned. Number one, they find it easy to talk about money. But number two, they've always had to provide for themselves. They've always had to save up for a college fund or their own pension plan through the 401k system. So they always knew where to go. There was a better, better access to this type of information so they could they could have the conversation. Um, so I think with all the focus now on financial well-being, it's in the press, you'll see it everywhere you look. I'm hoping that people will start to talk about it and have those conversations. And what we want to do is, is make it clear that, that we're out there to help. I think we've also found a bit of frustration with some of the employees that we've talked to about this issue of employees not understanding the benefits. So, so we're really trying to provide that linkage. So if an employer provides a pension, which they have to know under water enrolment, do employees understand the value of that pension? Do they understand how that contributes to their long term financial well-being? Do they know what it's going to kick out for them at the end? Do they know where all that information is? And do they have the tools available to maybe model that and, and play with it and engage with it? If the employer has you know, a, a, a savings discount platform, which many, many guys do now, could that be an opportunity to create the ability to save and if they're saving do they want to think about an ISA and do they understand these some of these basic concepts so I think you know Peter you'll you'll be able to chime in now you've done as many of these as I have but I think some of it it's start very small just start the conversation get people thinking about their own situations to then maybe have a follow-up conversation and that's what's making a difference but Peter, do, do, do chime in. Yeah, no, for sure. And uh, the bit you alluded to it in the previous slide there, the, the, the circle on the bottom right of the slide, you know, the desire to speak to someone outweighs, the desire to use digital yeah. tools. And I mean, even at Bruin Dolphin, we've advanced so much digitally in the last few years, but people still want to pick up the phone. And even if it's just some simple reassurance that what they're about to do is, is sound, it's right, it's fine they still want to hear the voice on the end of the phone or, or have that face-to-face -face meeting where they get that reassurance or guidance. Um, so digitizing is great, but I think when it comes to financial services and, and your financial well-being, um, the personal service is still really important. Yeah, definitely. And, and one of the questions that I've been asked, I've attended the Financial Wellbeing Conference in London, and they said to me, oh, well, you work in financial services, you work in this industry, why are you here? And I said, well, you know, we've got the full remit of employees we've got everything from you know secretaries administrators through hr people through to you know not everybody can be a peter we haven't you know not all advisors so even for our own employees you know we've created our own internal website we want run webinars and we have really high engagement with that i was just saying to simon before we started i was very nervous when we did the last one thinking no one was going to dial in and you know we're a circa 2000 person company we had 600 people dialed into our most recent webinar so you just don't know who's going to engage with it but there clearly seems to be a need and a demand across all sectors that we work with and we work, work across um, many and I, I know Peter you've got a, a case study that you'd like to share on that. Yes yeah, so these are this is just to give a bit of a flavour as to the types of companies um, that we've been working with up and down the UK. And Sarah alluded to, I think is it 32 that we work with in total, but um, I'll not go through all of the, the three of these individually, um, but the one on the right, the technology company headquartered in the North of England. Um, and basically the situation there was the company was about to IPO and float on the stock exchange. And the chief executive approached us um, really asking about his own personal finances 
and whether or not we could help because obviously the company was about to, to be sold and he was going to come into significant windfall. Um, he then asked, could we go and speak to his senior management who would be in a similar position because they had big stock holdings and, and they too were going to have significant windfalls. And from there, it sort of spiraled then through down the organization and we tailored the program as we went and we spoke to, to middle management then um, about their situations and then right down through the company. Um, and we were able to provide that advice right the way through. Um, and it really it came from that senior leadership identifying a need throughout the company that actually there was a significant number of employees whose situations may be changing. Um, but also just employees that wouldn't have previously maybe had access to this service. Um, I think there's a huge misconception when it comes to wealth management and too much focus tends to be on the wealth in that a lot of people think they need to have you know, half a million pounds or a million pounds before they can go and speak to someone or before someone will give them advice. Um, and it's not true. And it's something that we're really working hard to change. Um, so it should, you know, it should be accessible for everyone, regardless of of the, you know, the level you're at uh, in terms of your life, your lifestyle. And um, so how how we at Brew and Dolphin actually look to help, um, and what this financial well being program entails. So there's six sort of main areas, um, or it can sort of be condensed into four, and I'll touch on each of them um, in the next few slides. But really, what we look to do is empower the employees to make their own decisions, um, but also know where to turn to whenever they have questions um, or need that advice. Um, so the financial education seminars and the insight presentations are the sort of core or the crux of the, the program. And we can provide um, in-person seminars um, or online webinars on a range of topics. And then the one-to-one -one clinics, easy access to a qualified advisor. These are so important. You know, as we said, whenever we were talking about digitization, having access to someone to ask those questions is really, really important. Because a lot of the time, we maybe know what we want to ask, or we know the sorts of questions we should be asking. We just don't know who to turn to or where we can actually ask them. Um, and at the end of the day, I mean, when it comes to personal finances, it's personal. Um, so you want to be able to go to that confidential advisor in a safe, secure environment where you can ask those questions um, and get the information you need. And then things like financial well-being, top tips, um, so we can provide literature for the office and um, posters with you know top five tips for first-time investors, and um, one and two pagers that can go out in email format, um, you know, to to cover a wide range of topics and um, to help employees. And then finally, the online financial well-being tool. And Sarah's had some really great feedback on this, and I'll I'll touch on it in a slide coming up. And we, Sarah, you can probably attest to this more than I can, but we really work with your HR team um, you know, as part yeah. of the program. Do you want to yeah. take this one? I think I think it's just more more going back to what I said about sort of getting your employees to engage with your your benefits. You know, we as HR professionals are under quite a lot of pressure to make sure that. Uh, we're getting bang for buck on, on what, what we're spending our money on and are people using it are people engaging with it how do we drive that engagement rate up um and also as an as a, as a human resources department we're really worried about people's well-being and that employees are doing their absolute best so so absolutely i think it's it's really great to talk to other hr teams and and you know we learn from each other and share share top tips but but certainly the ability to bring some of this data to life um and i i love a planning tool is really helping people think about those issues and and the fact that they can do it sort of in their own space and and, and do it privately is and discuss it with the families you know and see and try and start the dialogue internally for sure so we work with the hr team um at your organization in order to maybe put dates in the diary for the webinars the seminars um, we can track the analytics of employee engagement um, which i will mention now because the companies that we've worked with so far, we've had some really great feedback and the number that sticks out there is 97%. So 97% of the attendees to any of the webinars or seminars that we've held have left that seminar with the intention of acting. Um, so that to me says that they find it useful. 
Um, and whether that be they pick up the phone to Bruin Dolphin and request a one-on-one -on -one or a callback, or they just go away and maybe look at their spending and drop a budget, or they go and take a look at their pension and take a look at the performance of their pension or how much they're contributing if they weren't aware of it. But the fact is that they went with the intention of acting. Um, so the engagement levels have been really, really positive, um, which has been great. I mentioned these, um, the education seminars, and they form the sort of basis of the, the program. We generally look to, to carry out somewhere between four and six of these over the course of maybe 12 months. Um, we generally start with getting financially fit, and that's quite a broad, wide-ranging, all-encompassing presentation that covers things like saving, um, starting your journey and in investing, looking at protection policies that might be of benefit, um, how you can put together a, you know, a plan or a budget. And then from there, we can be directed by you and by the employees. Um, so at the end of that first presentation, there are a couple of QR codes. Um, one of them allows you to book a callback or a one-to-one -one with an advisor. And the other one allows you to vote for which presentations or topics you would like to see next. Um, so they're totally wide ranging. Generally, the... the um, the sort of well-known ones along the top that are most popular, such as Money Matters, an introduction to investing, making your money work harder. But we can also tailor this to your organization, to what you and your employees really want. So we can go quite niche into things like inheritance tax planning, if that's what's appropriate and that's what 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 your employees really need. Um, but just to give you an idea, if we can cover a complete range of topics dependent on uh, on the needs of your organization and employees. I've already mentioned this uh, as has Sarah, but it's so, so important. Um, the one-to-one -one clinics and consultations, being able to pick up the phone and speak with a qualified advisor, ask those questions you've always wanted to ask in a safe environment. Because um, ultimately, you know, it's great getting all of the information and all of the advice, but no two people are the same. Uh, and no two people earn the same amount of money, spend their money on the same things, save for the same reasons you know we all have different goals and motivations so it becomes really important that when it comes to financial advice you're able to get advice that's tailored to you and your circumstances and, and you know your family circumstances and um, so that's really really important and um, it's, it's something we look to provide as part of the program i mentioned these um, i'll not dwell on them too much um financial well-being content and top tips so posters for the office um, literature that can go out in email format or brochures that can be left around the office that employees can pick up and take away. Um, one and two pages with um, some information around saving, investing, retirement planning, pensions. Um, and it gives them a bit of an idea of the topics that can we, we can look at. And then they can go away and, and you know think of, do I have questions around this area? Or that's something I've always wanted to ask. Um, and they know who to turn to. And the financial well-being tool. Um, Sarah's had some really good feedback on this. It's a, an online tool that we have tailored to the organizations that we've worked with. And employees can input some data um, and then play around with it a bit. So they can put in some personal information, um, their age, income, things like that, how much they're contributing to a pension, and then get some instant feedback on that. So what their retirement might look like, what sort of pot they might have when they're 60, 65, 70, um, what sort of income they might be able to get and then play around with the numbers to see how if they were to contribute a little bit more each month what sort of impact that may have in 20 or 30 years time when it actually comes to retirement I don't know if you want to add anything to that Sarah have I explained the, that well? this, this sort of I wish I'd had I wish I'd had this available to me when I was 25 it's like I have, do have this folder in my inbox of things I wish I would paid attention to when I was 25 but but actually being able to bring it to life is I know what 25 year old cares about pension, but if you can get your young employees engaged in this and get them to take a really long term view and they can understand the power of compounding, the power of investing in a low interest rate environment and what their pension might look like and that relatively small amounts contributed at a younger age will have a relatively big impact. It's quite exciting to me anyway. <laughs> It's, but, it is. It's incredibly powerful. Um, it's incredibly um, Most people think 
oh, it's only 50 pounds a month or we you know yeah. what sort of impacts that going to have. But when you do 50 pounds a month and if it's properly invested by the end of it, you have a, a significant pot. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a really, really interesting tool. Yeah, oh, I'd agree. And I think it's, it does help to bring it to life because I do appreciate this is um, pop from for me and Peter. It can be a dry subject. <laughs> so um, the more you can get something that hooks your employees in in a way that they can relate to, the better. And how can Brian Dolphin help? So I mentioned previously that I think there's a barrier when it comes to wealth management that people don't want to go and seek advice because they maybe don't think it's for them or they don't think they're wealthy enough. Um, and that's what we're working really hard to change. So on the left-hand side of that um, is the Brian portfolio service. So you can start from 500 pounds. Um, and there's a range of portfolios that you can choose from dependent on how much risk you want to take um, and you can get your money to work um, and now more than ever that's become so important I mean interest rates the Bank of England held interest rates again where they were um, in their meeting last week and they remain at record lows the cost of living is increasing inflation um, pretty well documented in the media at the moment on the rise. So getting your savings working for you has become even more important. Um, so we've constantly sort of lowered our minimum threshold on this um, and you can open an account from 500 pounds now. As we move along Wealth Pilot, it becomes a little more bespoke and tailored. Um, and this is financial planning advice over the phone. So this could be where you've got questions around your pensions or you're looking to maybe consolidate a couple of pensions from previous jobs. Um, or you've got questions around protection policies like critical illness cover, income protection, life assurance, um, or setting up stocks and shares, ISIS. it could be anything. Um, and then right the way along. So as uh, uh, Sarah Sarah said previously in the presentation, we do look after those with, with very complex needs um, that need that really bespoke and tailored advice. They need someone on the end of the phone all of the time. Um, and you know it does range from um, anyone up to high net worth, really. Um, so it's the full spectrum that we're able to, to offer, um, regardless of the stage you're at in your career or your, your savings or investment journey. So that's been a pretty quick overview of, of the service and I hope we've we've explained it well. Um, if you do have any um, questions or you'd like us um, to go into more detail or, or look at what we could do for your organization, um, we'd be delighted if you got in touch. But um, for now, thank you very much and we would be delighted to answer any questions. Peter, Sarah, thank you very much for, for your time. That, that, that was hugely helpful and, and, and very interesting.